This is the PP-19 Bison, and I can't help but look at this or hold it and have this uncontrollable urge to rush Bombsite B on Dust 2. My Counter-Strike viewers will definitely know the feeling. So this is a rather obscure firearm designed in the early 90s, which has become popularized by games like Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And while it looks pretty bizarre, it's actually a pretty simple design based on a very popular firearm. So without the magazine, you can see that it looks kind of just like a shrunken AK. And that's because that's basically what it is. It is based off of the AK-74 and was designed by Viktor Kalashnikov, the son of legendary gun designer Mikhail Kalashnikov, who designed the AK-47. So keeping it within the family with the same design language pretty much. And this actually has a lot of commonality with the AK-74, 60% interchangeable parts, which makes it very easy to work on and uh, ensure that you don't have uh, too many many manufacturing processes going on at the same time. So one of the ways that this thing differs from the AKs is that it is not gas operated. This is blowback operated. It has no gas system, no tube, no piston up there. This barrel really is just a tube out there. And while you can see that if we pull the bolt back, it has this tube there, this piston, which looks like a piston. It is really just serving as a guide rod, so there's not really anything going on up there. So blowback operated, very simple, uh, contributes to its rate of fire, which is relatively slow compared to a lot of things similar to this. The PP stands for Pistolet Polomyot, which stands kind of for machine pistol, but uh, with the way that the Russians classify it, it really stands more for submachine gun, and I think that is kind of where this thing fits. So let's grab a magazine full of tracer rounds load it on up and I've got a little arcadey style game where we're going to try and take out some of these targets as they appear quickly whoa very quickly apparently <laughs> uh oh I see we've got a flaming barrel in front <laughs> that's gonna cause problems Whew, and that was I think all of our rounds almost perfectly. So you could hear a lot of firing going on courtesy of the 64 round capacity of this magazine. This is a polymer magazine and it is one of the later designs. These were originally made in aluminum and were designed to hold a little bit more than 64, but they actually decreased that uh, mainly for you can, you know, keep a better design. The spring didn't have to work as hard. It's kind of like not overloading it, but also 64 is a multiple of 16, which is important because these 9 by 18 Makarov bullets came in boxes of 16. So it's cool to see just little tidbits of information like that have an influence on the, the design of something. So this, you might be tempted to call a drum magazine. It is really a helical magazine. If you imagine DNA is a double helix, it's kind of that like spiral down this has the rounds oriented in a similar fashion. It just kind of like spins them around like so. Now this will differ from something like a drum magazine, which has everything in pretty much the same plane. And it will also differ from a standard box magazine like so, which while this is from a P90 has the round kind of twist at the end, for the vast majority, they just line up double stack. So like one, 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 one. And uh, that allows it to have on the drum magazine this unique kind of fat shape, which also serves as a handguard. So that is definitely how you're gonna be holding it down like so. And I have a little bit of a problem with that because this magazine holding 64 rounds is extraordinarily heavy. It's just all that lead, the powder, the brass, the primers, or they'll probably steel cased rounds if it's nine by 18 Makarov. And that means that all the weight from the magazine is going to push the center of gravity for this up kind of around this area, which means that when you're holding it, all that weight is going to be on your front hand. And when you're maneuvering something, it's not really ideal because you're going to have to be carrying a lot of that weight on an arm outstretched. Whereas when you have something like the P90, which is a bullpup design, so all of the rounds feed backwards into this area where the action is, I'm gonna load this guy up. You can see that while this magazine with the 50 round capacity is very, very heavy and very dense, the center of gravity is going to be kind of around this area, which is where the rear hand holds. So it's going to be keeping it kind of more towards your shoulder in more compact and just a better experience overall. So since we have this, why don't we go ahead and shoot this off next to the PP-19. And you can see 64 rounds at a lower rate of fire versus 50 rounds at a relatively high rate of fire. Get this guy on full auto, and we'll try and take out that barrel. I think, oh, this one has tracers, so I can see what's going on. Whew. 
Ooh, <laughs> that was pretty good. It's nice seeing the impacts and you can just kind of walk in uh, the rounds on target. So kind of uh, a similar philosophy. I mean, the PP-19 with the round that it's firing, this is really a weapon that's designed to be compact, designed to be carried, you know, in close quarter situations, you can have it kind of on your chest with that stock folded down, uh, maybe for like a private security force or, or somebody doing like uh, defense work, you can maneuver in a building with this. And uh, because of that round, it is a pistol cartridge, you're really just operating up to, I don't know, like 80 meters. I'm sure the round reaches out a little bit more than that, but with the way that this is designed, it really is not going to be the one that you're going to want to use to take out targets on far hilltops. That being said, we have this scope here, a little red dot situation, which is going to help at least somewhat. So let's take out some other stuff. Oh yeah, much, much better. <laughs> wow, that's pretty great. So I'm going to try and pop that guy off. Well, it's not going to cooperate, so we'll just let it be for a moment. And I have a lineup of handguns as well as another weapon over there because I want to talk a little bit about the round that this guy fires. So currently in this form, it's firing the 9x18 Makarov, which is the modern pistol cartridge for the Russian military. And this guy is also chambered in some other rounds, but because we don't see a lot of these around, we just have to kind of assume that 9x18, as we see it stamped on there on the magazine very helpfully, uh, is going to be the one that you're going to see this in... Uh, most numbers. And 9x18 is unusual nowadays. Uh, you can see over here we have a Walther PPK. Now this is firing the 9x17 380 ACP round. And I'm going to pull one out here so that we can have them to look at later, but might as well fire off the rest of these. Not many rounds in there, so we'll keep that close. So here we have the Makarov. This is firing the exact same round. Go ahead and just grab it from here as the PP-19 Bison. Now, while I say Bison, we really probably want to say Bison. So, Pistolet Polonial Bison, the Bison just translating to Bison in English. So, in case you're wondering that, about that. But we all kind of just call it the Bison now. So, Bison, Bison, PP-19, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure people know what you're talking about. So. This one, I'm sure everyone will know, is a P08 Luger. This is firing the 9x19 cartridge, otherwise known as the 9mm Luger or 9mm Parabellum. Grab one from here. Gotta love that toggle lock system, it's so cool. Now we have a modern firearm finding that, firing that exact same 9x19 round. It is extraordinarily popular. It's a good size, not too big, but it definitely packs a punch. So you can see a relatively high capacity in this HK VP9 modern firearm. And so here we have a USP firing 45 ACP. So a much chunkier round. I'm going to make sure that I grab one. So obviously because it's a bigger bullet, less capacity, but uh, a little bit more power coming out of that guy. And then lastly, we have another round here. This is a TT-33 Tokarev firing the 762 by 25 millimeter Tokarev round. This is different from all the others because it is bottlenecked. It is shaped a little bit like a rifle cartridge, which has a different diameter for the casing than the projectile itself. So I have that there. We'll talk about them in a second. I'm, I know I'm going about this in a relatively disorganized manner. What did I do here? Oh, no around the chamber. Cool. So lastly, since we have this guy here with uh, no magazine in sight, this is the PPSH-41. And if you'll give me a moment to just try and remember where I put this, here we go. Let's go ahead and grab that drum magazine. This, you could kind of say, is the predecessor to the PP-19 Bison. So, same philosophy, it is a pistol cartridge, that 762 by 25 millimeter Tokarev, which is right there, against the 9x18 Makarov, which is, I want to say, probably that one. <laughs> They're all very similar, but high capacity pistol cartridge, so it's not a really long range weapon, fully automatic. So, why don't we fire these two side by side for a little time travel battle. 
Throw this on up there. Looks like he's ready to go. And this one needs to be cocked. This is an open bolt system. And I believe we are now on fully automatic. I could be wrong. I kind of have a tendency to mess this up. So we'll fire off at that middle barrel. Whoa, okay. That was definitely not fully automatic from you, sir. Let's get you a new magazine. Cool, here we go. Awesome. <laughs> this thing is so cool, just remembering all those uh, original Call of Duty uh, games from the past. So uh, we'll just keep him here for fun. So why did I bring all of these rounds out for you? Well, it was really just to show you kind of the, the sizes and how they're very, very similar. I, again, I don't remember which one's which. So this is 45 ACP, 7.62 by 25 millimeter Toko Rev. Uh, one of, this is probably 380 ACP, Makarov, Parabellum. <laughs> okay, so you can see they are very similar looking, but you don't want to fire the wrong cartridge through the wrong gun uh, because you're going to have head spacing issues. And uh, while it's something I've never seen done, I know it's not ideal. I actually would not mind seeing somebody fire like a, um, I don't know, 380 CP through a nine millimeter and, you know, kind of see what happens. Probably nothing bad, but I don't know. Someone ought to do it for science. <laughs> so uh, PP-19 Bison. It's a very, very cool firearm. Let's go ahead and try one more of these. I know I just have a tendency to, to draw. Oh, no, oh, that was pretty cool. Pretty amazing. Ooh, okay, not great. Let's try and go through the, the red dot here. Awesome. Oh no, just ran out of bullets. <laughs> oh, those 64 rounds. I mean, generally speaking, you'd have to reload three or four times to get that many rounds out. But uh, with this guy, you just keep on firing and firing and firing forever. So while this is kind of the variant that you guys will have definitely seen most of the time, there is another variant which is less popular, but uh, no less important in terms of the history and the impact that this weapon has had on our world. So we have here the uh, the alternate variant here, which obviously having been used in less numbers, uh, maybe is not what you would have seen normally uh, in any of your video games. So well, you can see some, some clear modifications having gone on. Uh, we have this system of high explosive projectile throwing M203s underneath, which is not, not exactly what you might expect, you know, for a uh, Russian firearm using this technology but uh, it is a, a good example of how you take a good design and make it even better. It doesn't matter where a good idea comes from. So we can load that on up. We also have space for our rounds to go in underneath. So you can see as well, we've got a suppressor up there to keep things quiet. So you head inside your building, you've got this thing, it folds up to keep it nice and compact. Maybe you wanna wear it on your chest inside a vehicle or so. You can pull it out at a moment's notice. You can, uh, well, okay, we'll uh, you know allow that to be stowed. And we have this amazing scope here. This is a 20 times magnification scope, but just in case that's not enough, we have it going through a magnifier as well so that you can take out targets on the molecular level. Oh my God, look at all those protons and neutrons. They're just getting ready for annihilation. So let's go hot here and take them down. Perfect. So next we need to transition into close range. We can go over 45 degrees to the left and you've got that red dot. Absolute perfection. Oh wait, no, your red dot has failed. 90 degrees to the right. You've got backup iron sights. Target down below the hill. Oh no, he's evading us and we've run out of ammunition. It's time to switch to plan B. Target down. But we got done. No worries, we've got four more in reserve. <laughs> oh, there we go. What's happened to this guy? There we go. Nope, no dice. Okay, we're just gonna have a, uh, a live round in there. Oh, I see the problem. 
That's next. They need to automate the loading system there. <laughs> so the final upgrade that you can see here, a tiny little torch so that we can light our cigar while we're out there trying to snipe tiny, tiny little things. <laughs> so obviously this is just a joke. It was probably clear immediately. But uh, one of the things I enjoy kind of making in the game because uh, you can be silly and have access to resources that you, you know, don't normally <laughs> have access to. <laughs> this thing's so silly, I'm going to fire it off again. Maybe we'll try and initiate the, uh, the laser here. There we go. Perfect. Oh, yes. Absolute perfection. I don't know why those tracers are green. That's unusual. I've never seen green tracers before. <laughs> so, PP19 Bison. I'm going to probably destroy my computer by tossing this. Yeah, it doesn't like that. <laughs> Where is the original? Here we go. PP19 Bison. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you learned something, and uh, I hope that it was at least uh, mildly entertaining. If you liked the video, please give me that like. It is so much help to see your support, as well as uh, reading some of your comments down below. I'd love to get back to you guys on that. So uh, that's all I got for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you liked the video and want to see more content like this. But that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.